My name is Dr. Asanga Fernando. I'm a consultant cancer psychiatrist um, based at St. George's in South London, um, where I work integrated as part of oncology and work with surgeons, oncologists, nurses, and palliative care clinicians, uh, optimizing the mental health of cancer patients. Um, I'm all, I also have a senior educational role within the trust where I'm director of our simulation and technology enhanced learning. Um, and so together, those two roles kind of complementary each other in a way that I look at the assessment and management of a range of mental health conditions associated with cancers. I think lung cancers are quite a high risk group when it comes to mental health. Um, we know, for instance, that uh, lung cancer patients together with upper GI and head and neck cancer patients make up nearly 60% of cancer-related suicides. We know for a fact that sort of seven, you know, upwards of 70% of cancer patients more broadly with a diagnosis of depression don't really get the care that they need or deserve from a depression point of view and we know that on a lung cancer pathway there are a range of different treatment challenges um, and that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking a little bit more about in my presentation. So I think there's a lot to do as a community in terms of integrating psychological care um, and functioning within the lung cancer setting. I think there's a huge role to play in terms of identification of mental health earlier in the piece um, because actually what we know is if you identify mental health early enough you can do something to treat that in a manner that will also benefit the cancer patient journey as well and I think there's a hugely important piece that's currently missing a bit on improving quality of life outcomes so when you speak to patients they'll tell you that the things that matter to them are around their functioning about their relationships about their ability to work um, and as, as especially within lung cancers as treatments evolve and immunotherapies Evolve, people are living longer and actually um, you know they want those opportunities so how much do we actually you know how, how much do we actually know about those things and measure those things in a way that we can do justice to evolving that conversation so I think there's the awareness side of things there's the clinical assessment side of things and then there's a huge educational role to play in those things as well and a big role to sort of think about immersive ways of educating trainees nurses others to do to look at all of that better